Hi. So I want to share a little something with you that is important to me and maybe it's important to you too. And that is the premise of the truth and telling the truth and knowing the truth, having the truth, understanding the truth, whatever that might be. So when I was young, younger, when I was in my 20s, I used to work at a bank. And there was a gentleman that worked with me that called me the truth finder. He said, like, awesome. You always have to get to the truth. So I'm just going to call you the truth finder instead of awesome. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you call me whatever you'd like. That's fine. So as the years went along, the need for truth or to look for the truth became less and less relevant to me because it made me feel as though I was um, pushing a boundary of somebody else's, like trying to get like some kind of an answer or response if I felt like it wasn't really the whole truth. So I started to kind of pull back more and more and more because I didn't want to inconvenience other people. I didn't want to be too much because, you know, when you're told that um, maybe you're a little intense or maybe you are just too much for other people, well, what that does is that in turn makes you want to be less than. I don't want to make too much noise. I don't want to be a bother to anybody. So this is what has happened in my life. So this week's podcast that comes out tomorrow is me speaking vulnerably again about my inability to kind of differentiate between the the boundary lines of the truth and my need for the truth and my um returning again to codependency, backbending, and wanting to accommodate for others in my mind, thinking that I'm helping them. You'll hear it all tomorrow. But I referenced this book, this book that I am now reading for the second time. I should be paid royalties on this book because I talk about it constantly for a reason. And I want to read these to you because I'll get, I'll get it to you in a minute. Okay. I'm going to read these. The Boundary Boss Bill of Rights. And this is a book called The Boundary Boss by Terry Cole. I would recommend you buy it. It is uh, my most important book that I go to uh, daily. So these are the Boundary Boss Bill of Rights. And I want you to listen to these because I want you to own these as well, okay? You have the right to say no or yes to others without feeling guilty. You have the right to make mistakes, to course correct or change your mind. You have the right to negotiate for your preferences, desires, and needs. You have the right to express and honor all of your feelings if you so choose. You have the right to voice your opinion, even if others disagree. You have the right to be treated with respect, consideration, and care. I'm going to get back to that one later. You have the right to determine who has the privilege of being in your life. Isn't that funny? The privilege. How, it, uh, how we forget that, that it is a privilege. You have the right to communicate your boundaries, limits, and deal breakers. That's going to be in tandem with what I'm going to tell you in a minute. You have the right to prioritize your self-care without feeling selfish. That's a tough one for me. You have the right to talk true, be seen, and to live free. Do you see why I love this book? All right. So I've been working on my boundaries, right? I've been working on like being really feeling them and like when something doesn't feel right for me or I feel like I'm getting taken advantage of or something doesn't sit right with me, I am working on finding my voice in a nice way to say to somebody, mm, that doesn't make me feel good or mm, yeah, no, I'm not signing up for that or that's that goes against what I believe in, whatever. So this week I had a situation where... Um, Actually, it started last week, and I'm going to ask your opinion on this and how you, would you have handled it differently? So I 
had a request to meet up with somebody and do kind of like a, a meet and greet, kind of like a coffee chat, get to know one another. So we had set a time, this person had requested to do this, it wasn't me, they had requested it of me to have this time with me. And I said, sure, that would be great, let's get together, I'll send a Zoom link. Send a Zoom link and I, on the day of the call, I send a message saying, hey, everything's still okay with this time. They write back, oh no, can't, can't make it that time. Um, let's change it to a different time. Okay. I'm like, I got it. No problem. That, that happens. Got it. So, uh, we determine another day, another time. I send another zoom link and that was set. And day of, I send a message saying, Hey, everything's still okay. I'm going to meet you at this time. And they're like, Oh man, you know what? I'm going to have to push it back 10 minutes because I'm gonna be on another call. So I'm gonna to have to push it 10 minutes because I'm getting on this call late. Okay, so what are you seeing already? What are you determining already for yourself in what I've just told you? Because I'm gonna to get to the next part. So I say, okay, well then let's, we'll move the appointment 10 minutes so that you'll have your time but I'll only have 20 minutes to, to chat with you because I have to jump off at this other time, half an hour, supposed to be a half an hour later. So now it would be 20 minutes later. Um, so I send a whole new link, send it. I do the edit. I send a new link, all that stuff. And I'm on the call exactly when I said I would be. And I'm waiting and I'm waiting. I'm waiting. And I waited four minutes. I'm like, okay, I'm going to wait one more minute. And I sent a message saying, I will be waiting one more minute. And as of that point, I'm disconnecting the call. So one minute later, they didn't jump on. I disconnected the call. And then about, um, it would have been nine minutes after the, the second time, um, the person jumps on the call and like, hey, I'm here now. And I'm like, hmm. Uh, well, so my question to you is, I did handle this because the person asked me to do another call and I'm like, mm, no, no, we're not, we're not going to have another call because my boundary, my boundary has been crossed. And my boundary is if I set an appointment with somebody, I understand things happen. Sure. I get it. No problem. One time, got it. Uh, second time, mm, you're pushing it. Third time, no, I'm done. I'm done. And so that to me shows a lack of interest in my or respect for my time. Because when you make an appointment with me, at that point, we have an appointment. What do you think? If you make an appointment with somebody, at that point, do you have an appointment with them? It doesn't matter that we're not we're not doing business together. We were meeting one another. So then my question to you is, I responded to this person saying, yeah, there's not going to be a next time. Not sure about you, but I don't, I don't sign up for this kind of, um, this kind of, uh, basically lack of, um, respect for my time. So good luck. And the person responds and says, that, oh, they don't understand that that would, I would be so cold about this. And somebody who has a podcast like More Moss kind of goes against that premise, doesn't it? <laughs> That's how they completely deflected their actions and disrespect towards my time. They drag my podcast into it and say, that that doesn't seem like it's very more mossy of me. And I'm going to be, I'm going to tell you right now, my friends, that was very mossy of me because that's a moss move. You know why? Because I don't let people walk over me. I don't let people walk on my time because my time I respect. You may not respect your time. I respect my time. What do you do? What would you do? How would you handle that? Do you have people that are walking over you or pushing you 
stepping over your boundary and you're like, okay, fine. You know, that was, that took a lot for me because I'm working on setting boundaries for myself and being firm with my own, like knowing I'm like, Ooh, yeah, no, no. Three times. That's, that's not cool. I mean, that's now, now it's just ridiculous. Now I'm kind of embarrassed for you. Um, but you can't keep your own time because right. The, the lack of keeping his own time was making it that he was not respecting my time. Do you see? So my time is very precious. I spend it how I want and who I want with who I'm, whom I want. And I thought this was going to be a nice relationship, but now he's blocked. So blocked. Bye. Adios, amoebas. I don't play that game. That's a moss move. That's a more moss move. What about you? I would love your opinion. Tell me, do you have people walking on you? Do you have people thinking they can talk to you this way? Do you have people not respecting your time, your energy, your effort, your skill sets? Your bosses aren't respecting you. Your husband's not respecting you. Tell me what's going on because this is constant work for me. I constantly come up with things that I'm being tested, but I'm really proud of myself because you know what? I decide how people treat me. I decide. Nobody else decides how they get to treat me because I am the person that dictates how this is going to go down and what's coming in here, what's coming into here. And if I don't like it, I'm going to say no. And it feels really good. A little uncomfortable, I will say, but it feels good. Tell me about you. Share your thoughts. I'd love to know. Take care. And I hope that I can count on your support listening to my podcast tomorrow.